So, the official translations for My Hero Academia manga chapter 356 are out, and in this video, we're going to go over once again the differences between the official and unofficial translations, as well as dive a little bit more into Endeavor's character and what it means for the story moving forward. So, when it comes to this chapter of My Hero Academia, this was a very in-depth chapter when it comes to Endeavor as a character. And when it comes to the differences between the official and unofficial translations this chapter, for the most part, there are some minor changes between the official and unofficial, but then there are some that directly affect Endeavor as a character and what his motivations are for being a hero. So we are going to be diving into the differences between the official and unofficial translations before we tackle more of the Endeavor centered part of this video. So one slight difference in this chapter when it comes to the differences between the official and unofficial translations involves Tokoyami, Sukuyomi's power set or his move. Because in one translation it is translated as Black Abyss Ephemeral Ragnarok, while in the official translations it's translated as Abyssal Black Body Ragnarok Fleeting Blow. And I think that it rolls off the tongue more for the official translations, mainly because I can barely say that E word in the unofficial translations. But besides that, another major difference between the official and unofficial translations actually comes from All For One himself. And how in the unofficial translations, you have All For One questioning what is going on and that his quirks are rebelling and how this isn't something that has happened before and that these individuals are just fragile reproductions in reference to the vestiges inside of All For One. But in the official translations, that's actually not the case. Because in the official translation, he brings up the idea that Jiro actually really didn't do anything and that what is causing him to lose control is that his own quirks are rebelling against him. But what he thinks is the main cause of it isn't Jiro or isn't the vestiges, but it's that he has a synthetic copy of his original power and that his authority has weakened. And this is very interesting because this could imply that all for one, the actual quirk, because it's a copy, it has grown weaker and therefore all for one, the person does not have as much control of the vestiges as he used to, or that it may not be as weakened as he believes, but what has actually weakened is his own perception of what is going on and that he has lost the control of everything that he has had in a sense, his own will may have weakened and therefore it allows for these other vestiges to begin to take over and try to rebel against him. So either way you think about it, it does make a little bit more sense that the quirk of All For One himself is weakening and therefore the vestiges have more control or that All For One himself is beginning to lose power because he's being pushed into a corner. And as we saw in the chapter, he is pushed so much into a corner that he has to resort to actually eating the vestiges inside of All For One, just showing how desperate he is. And now we're getting to the final difference between the official and unofficial translations. And this really comes down to talking a little bit more about Endeavor and his character. And the difference between the official and unofficial translation just comes from this one small panel. And what is said in this panel in the unofficial translations is that a father tried to save their little girl from a villain and died in the process along with that girl. But in the official translation, what is stated is that his father, Endeavor's father, attempted to save a random girl and that they both died in the process. And this is even more interesting and more impactful because it gives a direct line of causation to why Endeavor became a hero. Someone that he knows and he cares about died while trying to save someone else and leading to that other person's death, which caused Endeavor at this young age to strive to be a hero. And through that incident, it showed Endeavor a weakness that he potentially has and that he isn't invulnerable, he isn't invincible, that he is weak in comparison or in relation to other people. And from this one singular moment of his own father dying, trying to save someone random, and pretty much really being the embodiment of what a hero is supposed to do, it caused Endeavor to go down this track to become who he is. And as we've seen with this chapter, 
He wanted to be a hero most likely prior to the jealousy that he felt for All Might, and that he did name himself Endeavor as a hard working in relation to what he viewed to be his weakness. And we don't get an exact understanding of what this quote unquote weakness is when it comes to Endeavor, but from what we're getting in this chapter, the implication that Endeavor's weakness is just the fact that he isn't the strongest, that he is in a sense weak because he isn't the best and that because he doesn't want to be viewed as weak and wants to be the strongest, this is what has pushed him to the point of who he is. His determination, his drive, his stubbornness, all to battle the idea that he is weak. And him trying to overcome that weakness of being weak is what drived him to be the second best, but what also continued to drive him to be even more abusive, to be even more horrible, to be even more ugly, is that he eventually came to a realization that he will never be able to overcome his weakness. Because there are always going to be individuals such as All Might, such as Deku, who are going to be objectively better and objectively stronger than him. And therefore, to try and try and try to overcome his weakness is going up a hill that leads to nowhere. But that even when it comes to him trying to overcome that weakness, even though it made him who he is, it is also the thing that also kept him alive. And there are many instances in the story where if Endeavor didn't have this drive to overcome his weakness, he would have most likely died. Either we're talking about his instance fighting all for one, when he's fighting against Shigaraki during the war, even to the idea of him fighting Hood and where he could have been killed in that moment. His determination, his stubbornness to try and overcome his own weakness forced him to continue to move and continue to fight until he wins. So from what we're getting with his backstory and this reveal, that the endeavor that we've known this entire time has always perceived himself as being weak and not being superhuman. And that even though he realizes this, he's going to take that flaw inside of him to try and overcome his weakness and use it for good. Even if it means that he himself will no longer be able to actually stop being weak, he's still going to use that drive to try and overcome it to try and make it beneficial to the world. And this will lead to him doing a fire fist with his literal stump of a hand, firing at all for one with full fiery force, giving his declaration that he's going to continue the fight because that is his duty, that is his job as a hero. So it's very interesting to see how just this one perspective of his flashback, his backstory, can really flesh out the character of Endeavor. And potentially from here on out, what is going to happen is that Endeavor is most likely not going to stop fighting. He is going to continue to fight on and fight on until the very last breath. Which I think from what we're getting in this chapter, we are here to perceive that All For One has been defeated or at least is about to go down, even if it means Endeavor dying in the process. But I think what is going to happen and what we're going to be seeing more of Endeavor in the story moving forward is that he's going to try and overcome this weakness continuously and continuously and continuously until he potentially meets up with Toya, where he will have to fight the individual that was able, or at least was the closest to Endeavor, giving up and finally overcoming that weakness and that it could eventually lead to his weakness finally overcoming Endeavor, eventually leading to Endeavor dying. Basically what this is building up is that Endeavor will not be able to overcome his weakness when facing Toya, and that this will eventually lead to Toya potentially killing him, then both going out in a blaze of glory, or most likely than not, Endeavor just being killed. So if anything, what this chapter is setting up is Endeavor is definitely getting death flags placed on him and that most likely than not, he is not making it out of this story alive, let alone unscathed. Because he definitely did lose his right arm, and even though he was able to make it out of fire, he still lost his right arm. So at the very least, we're going to see Endeavor as he was at the beginning of the story, as he is at the end of the story. Someone who will be striving to overcome his own weakness, to try and be the best, to try and be the strongest, even if it means him dying in the process, and that the only way that he is going to die is if his weakness finally overcomes his stubbornness to try and overcome it, which is most likely going to occur with the confrontation between Toya. 
So yeah, this is just more of my general thoughts about Endeavor, what's going to be going on with him later on in the story, and how this really changes the perspective of Endeavor when it comes to him trying to achieve the goal of surpassing All Might, not necessarily because he wanted to be better than All Might, but that he wanted to prove to himself that he can be someone that is superhuman so that he wouldn't have to face a similar fate as his father, dying because of his own inability to fight back. He just wanted to show the world that he is actually special, that he is actually superhuman. Even if in reality, no one is truly superhuman, what makes you superhuman is your drive and determination to try and help people. The reasoning why Deku and All Might are considered superhuman isn't because of their quirks, isn't because of their power, but it's because they're individuals who strive to be better than what they are for the benefit of others, to help protect the people. And I think potentially when Endeavor learns that lesson, he will truly become a superhuman, but that will also be the moment where his weakness will overcome him and then he eventually dies. So yeah, those are all of my thoughts for this chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed my ramblings about Endeavor and why My Hero Academia is at its best when it's talking about the characters and getting to see more of these characters and getting to see more of their interactions with other characters as well as a little bit more development for characters like Endeavor who really, really needed it with the horrible person that they are. So yeah, what did you think? Do you think that this chapter really fleshed out Endeavor as a character or do you think that there's more for us to learn about Endeavor moving on in the story moving forward? Leave your thoughts down in the comments down below, leave a like on the video if you liked it, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more content like this. Do all that cool jazz, and hopefully, I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye!